Okay, are you ready to get equipped with radical trust? Hope so. Let's get started. You know, contemporary Christian teaching and preaching doesn't put much focus on this topic, and indeed it is something that contemporary societies don't emphasize either, at least not the way people did back in earliest times. What am I talking about? Names. Now, if you think about it, it's really no mystery why. That's because if you truly know and understand the name, capital N, capital A, capital M, capital E, you're in for a blessing beyond description. You see, there have only been two sinless men to walk this planet, Adam and Jesus Christ, and both of them were very involved in names. You see, before Adam sinned, while his mind and soul were still pure and uncorrupted, God had him name all the land animals and birds. Jesus, during his life and ministry, was all about the name. For instance, in Matthew 1, it says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And from Matthew 6, 9, we learned, In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And in Matthew eighteen twenty, Jesus said, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. In Luke 2, we read, And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And John 1 puts it this way, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. And in John 3, He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Why, Jesus even gave new names to some of his disciples. Simon to whom he gave the name Peter. Check out Mark 3.16. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder. Check out Mark 3.17 for that. Why, even in heaven, some will receive new names. In Revelation chapter 3 we read, He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar, in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more, and I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. In biblical thought, a name does not merely identify It expresses the essential nature of its bearer. In all probability, Adam named the beasts by observing their natures. Remember, he he was clear-sighted before he sinned, as he had nothing else on which to base his judgments. From this arises a principle how the Bible uses the term name. To know God's name is to know God as he has revealed himself. That is to understand his nature. When name is used in this way, it does not mean the word by which a person is called, but rather the whole nature or character of the person, as far as we know it or understand it. This is why the proverb says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. So then, to believe in the name of Jesus Christ 
means to believe in the nature and the character of Jesus Christ. It means to believe that he is the Son of God and that he stands in relation to the Father in a way that no other person in the universe ever has or ever will. It means that he can perfectly reveal the Father to us. It means that we believe he is the Savior, the High Priest, the Mediator and Intercessor, and our soon coming King. It means that we believe that through him we have entrance into God's presence, and not just entrance to him, but actually fellowship with him. Thank you, John Rittenbaugh. In fact, when you praise the name of the Lord, it implies that you should know that name and the character of it. For instance, Psalms 86, 12 says, I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forevermore. Psalms 113, verse 1 says, Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And in Isaiah 42, 8, we read, I am the Lord. And that word Lord is literally Jehovah. It says, I am the Lord, that is my name. So we know the name of the Lord, at least one. He has several. What does it mean? Well, it means the one bringing into being, life giver, giver of existence, creator, the absolute and unchangeable one, the existing, ever-living I am. We also know him as Jesus, which, by the way, means Jehovah is salvation. So you see all the way back in Eden, in tasking Adam to name all the creatures, God was training Adam to know him. Then sin entered our world, and it changed Adam's ability to perceive and thus to name. He could no longer perceive and know someone's character. Consequently, what did he do? He hid from God. And mankind has been hiding from God ever since. Enter Jesus Christ. What Adam never understood and what Jesus perfectly manifested, the character of God. Jesus said to him, this is in John 14, 9, Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. Quite simply, God wants us to know him. In fact, he wants the whole cosmos to truly know him. You know, the name says it all. Now may the Lord grant you peace in the midst of any storm and faith to trust him. Look for our next podcast, and may you realize more of His grace today. <music>